here. It's Robin from quiltingintheloft.com. I'm so sorry I haven't been to you sooner since my most recent uh, video. I've been busy and preoccupied with uh, number one was my youngest daughter's wedding no, in late November. And then my oldest daughter just had a number ba baby number, baby boy number three, uh, December 1st. So I've been preoccupied with helping out family and uh, but I've just gotten back to sewing again and I'm really excited, hoping that you're going to have a great 2022 and I want to sort of ease you into the new year with this new project. And as you can see right here, I have some notebook covers. We're going to talk about that in a minute. They're efficient, they're easy, they are practical, they're functional, and they're lots of fun to make. They take very little fabric. So as you can see, what's really great about them is you can use your beautiful fabric that you're afraid to cut into because it features it so beautifully. As you can see, this is some fabric that almost ombres from all different colors, a rainbow of colors. Um, uh, I've also used this gorgeous geometric uh, fabric as well. And um, I've practiced some of my free motion quilting on solid cotton. And then I've used some actual upholstery fabric um, as well. And um, just some fun quilting stitches. This one has a spiral on it. It's hard to see because it's paisley fabric. Um, and then as well, I've used recycled denim. So that was really fun as well. So lots of options with this, with fabric that you can choose. You can use thicker fabric. I'm gonna explain to you what you do in order to use thicker fabric. This one is denim. And there was a line down the center, a seam down the center, and I covered it up with some, um, with some bias tape that I made myself. And then you can also do a tab closure on it, like I have with this one. Or you can do a tie closure. Or you can use the uh, flat fold elastic, uh, which is really great. And I have it in a couple of colors here. Um, it's beautiful elastic and it works as a bookmark, but it also works to shut, to keep your uh, book closed from those peeping eyes. And you know, we all think that maybe some, or some of us think, not all of us, um, that writing is dead. But for myself, I thought this was a great practical project because I write out lists of things to do every single day. It, I find that it keeps me organized and productive. And so this is a great project for that. And up next, I'm going to talk about the materials that are required and we'll talk to you soon. I'm back again to talk about the supplies that you need to make your notebook covers. Um, so first of all, you will need a 10 and three quarter length of flat fold over elastic. Um, I found some at my local lens mill store. Um, I know buyannie.com also has it. Um, there's a few other places I think you can get it on Amazon as well. So you'll need that uh, 10 and three quarter piece of it's about three quarter inches. It's not quite an inch. You'll need that. You uh, will need a uh, piece of fabric for the front. I'm gonna do a solid when I do my demonstration today because I wanna show you that these um, notebook covers are great for men too. I have two woodworkers in my family. Um, two, both my son-in-laws are woodworkers. So I'm hoping that maybe um, this could be a Christmas or a birthday gift for them. Um, I don't, I think that both men and women are still writing despite what other people are saying about the curse of world, we are still writing because uh, I think we still need to. I think it helps us to remember things. Um, so this piece of fabric, I'm just gonna refer to my notes, is 17 and a half by 12 inches. That's the front of your book. And then you'll have a piece of batting that's bigger. So you could make it like 18 um, inches by 13 inches, for example. And then it could be any batting. It just needs to be a thinner batting. And then as well, you wanna make an 18 by 13 inch piece of backing. And it doesn't need to be beautiful because you won't show, it, this fabric will not be shown at all. It's just to sort of give the notebook cover some stability. So um, you could even use muslin or your more affordable fabric that you found or your ugly fabric, whatever you wanna use, but it doesn't need to be beautiful. So those are the three pieces that you need for the actual front of your notebook. And then um, on the inside, you'll have a pocket. It's four and a half by 10 and three quarters. I've got this gorgeous ski fabric. And it's just a little hint of the quilting design that I'm going to demonstrate on it. So these are the two pocket pieces, four and a half by 10 and three quarters. And then you have a 10 and three quarter by 12 inch inside fabric. 
that piece right there. Those are the fabric and the flat uh, fold over tape as well that you need. Um, and then you'll need some quilting needles. I use Schmetz, just my preference. And then if you're gonna use heavier uh, fabric like the upholstery weight or denim that I talked about, um, you might want to, with your pockets on the pieces on the inside, you might want to, if you're going to use cotton, add some lightweight fusible interfacing to the wrong side of that fabric because you kind of want the front fabric to match the pockets in terms of stability. You don't want them to be too flimsy. And so I found that that was really helpful. So this is just a really lightweight uh, fusible interfacing. It's got the little bubbles on it. So that's helpful. And um, obviously you'll need some thread and I've got some cotton thread in my bobbin and for my top as well. And um, these clips, those beautiful sewing clips, those are awesome handy clips. Um, you need those as well. Maybe some pins. If you don't have clips, you can also use pins. Clips are really helpful though. A pair of scissors, some sewing scissors, uh, machine quilting gloves. Um, any of you who've been taking my classes with uh, free motion quilting, you know that I use gloves. Recommend machingers. You can see that these are very stained on the fingertips. They get washed all the time, but they get used all the time. So they always pick up ink and whatever else, uh, you know, uh, oils that are in your skin and whatnot, but mostly just the ink from your fabric. So they do get soiled over time. Then you'll need a free motion foot and a quarter inch foot. And I don't have that on my machine, but most of you know what a quarter inch foot looks like. Okay. And I'm going to talk about the composition books. So the composition books are these little notebooks. This one I got at a, just a, a mom and pop a dollar store. Um, and then this one, also called a composition book, I got at Dollarama. So that gives you some idea. I know in the States there's Dollar Tree and many other dollar stores. So you need it to be close to seven and a half by 10 inches. Um, even if it's a quarter of an inch out, it still will work for this particular pattern. So that's an option. And then the other option is moleskins. Um, these are available at most office supply stores like Staples. You can also get them on Amazon and they're actually called Moleskin, M-O-L-E-S-K-I-N, Moleskin books, notebooks. They look like that on the inside. The composition books look the same, but they work as well. So this pattern works for uh, the more affordable dollar store books as well as the Moleskins, okay? Um, and you can see that I've got different color of that flat fold over elastic. I believe that I mentioned earlier that um, by any, but also Babyville carry this. And then you might find it at some of your other uh, boutique fabric stores um, as well. And, uh, oh, I want to talk about upholstery fabric. Don't be afraid to use upholstery weight fabric. And I'm going to show you the book. I mentioned it earlier for, I made this in particular for, uh, one of my son-in-laws because they're into woodworking as you can see it's got leather on the corners so i found at my local um, fabric shop which happens to be lens milks just around the corner for me it's a hop skip and a jump and i found some scrap leather they have a bin of scrap leather i think i paid 2.99 for a piece that was actually uh, about six inches longer than this because i've taken two three inch squares off of it for the corners and just made some corners with just some triangles. So that's really fun to use and thick and beautiful and stable. But this upholstery weight fabric, as you can see, has like a backing on it. And with this particular fabric, you don't need your backing fabric. You just need your this front fabric and your batting, and then you won't need a backing. You will need the inside fabric, but you won't need the backing fabric. So if you've paid attention to what my measurements were, um, then you can uh, make it with upholstery weight. The other thing is denim. If it's fairly thick, you won't need a backing for that either. So that's a couple of tips on using heavier fabric. Um, up next, I'm gonna demonstrate how I get started with the quilting and we're gonna quilt the quilt sandwich, which is the front of the notebook. Hi there, I'm back again. I forgot to mention three different items that you need in addition to what we just talked about. And that is 505 quilt basting spray or your quilter safety pins to baste your, your front of your notebook and your batting and backing together. It's important that you have something um, that you can use to baste it with because um, it, that way it's not gonna shift. Even with a small project, it's important that you baste because you don't want your project shifting around as you're trying to quilt it because that just creates a whole lot of 
havoc when you're trying to manipulate your fabric. Um, as well, I mentioned, I recommend um, getting yourself a sketchbook. Uh, I think this is just from the dollar store. It's, it's very old, but it's just a dollar store sketchbook. And then I draw out like my whatever I'm going to stitch ahead of time. As your brain um, is a muscle and you have muscle memory with it. And if you draw it out ahead of time, then it's much easier for you to actually sew it out on your machine. Because when you're doing free motion quilting, you're actually sewing with your, you're actually drawing with your sewing machine. So you can see that the flame stitch on the solid fabric, um, I actually practiced it on paper first. And that's the way I teach my classes as well for free motion quilting is I, I have everybody, all of my students draw out whatever they're working on first and then practice it on their machine. And uh, for the most part, people tell me that that really helps them out with their and makes them more effective with their free motion quilting. So that is another thing. A sketchbook, the 505 basting spray or quilting quilters basting pins. And as well, if you're not the type that can follow along on a video and actually do the project or you have difficulty that for that with that and you need something concrete, I have written this up into a pattern. It includes how to make uh, the pattern for the tab and the sizing for the um, ties for the book, as well as all of the measurements that I've talked to you about today and a bonus uh, bookmark, which we'll talk about later. Um, there's a pattern for a bookmark in there that you can use for all kinds of books, but it's really helpful with these um, notebook covers as well. And I'm going to get to demonstrating uh, the free motion quilting that I'll be doing on this very shortly. As you can see, I have my square ready on my sketchbook and I'm going to start to draw my snowflake design. And um, it's a great way to audition your design, to look at the scale of it, to see how it's going to work on your project. And so I'm going to get started and I'm going to do what I call swirls and snowflakes. And I'm just going to start in a random spot and I'm going to swirl. Kind of looks like maybe there's some wind stirred up. And then I'm going to go straight into a line back to the center and just kind of make some spires on my snowflakes. And you may have to travel back and forth and that's okay. Traveling kind of adds more definition to your quilting. And I'm going into another swirl. When I actually do it on the fabric, it'll look a little bit different. And going up into my snowflake, traveling back on the spires of the snowflake. And then traveling out again. And then back down here and make a snowflake down here. And obviously I'm not doing a perfectly straight line, but once I get to my quilting, I'm actually better at my quilting than I am in my drawing. So don't be intimidated by the drawing process. You don't have to be an artist. You're just trying to convey a theme. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think as quilters, we're quite the group of perfectionists, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And don't forget, no two snowflakes are alike. So that allows us some leeway. And there you have it. I'm back again. I just wanted to explain to you the next steps that you take. Now I have my quilt sandwich quilted and I have it square to 16 and a half by uh, 10 and three quarters. And it looks like this at this point. Okay, so that's my quilt sandwich. That's the back and that's the front. Okay, um, so it's gonna be folded like this to go on onto the moleskin or your um, composition book. And so the next step is to mark with a, I've just used a um, 505, 505 quilt spray can cap, very scientific. And you wanna mark all four corners of your um, quilt sandwich because it's gonna need it with, to go over the composition book. So you just want to mark it as close to the corner as you can. 
with the, I just used a Sharpie marker, a real thin Sharpie marker. So I get a nice accurate corner and um, all four corners. And then the other thing you're gonna mark is not just the all four corners of this, but you're gonna mark two corners of your pocket fabric. And it's the corners opposite of where you're gonna fold your seam in. And I'll explain the seam in a second. But I'm gonna go ahead and mark my corners now. It's just two corners of the pocket that you're gonna mark. Opposite to where your press seam is. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And we'll get on to the next step for you. So I'm really, really close to the corner. Okay, and then the next step is to press in the edges of your pocket fabric. So as you can see, I have pressed it in once a quarter of an inch and then pressed it in again a quarter of an inch the wrong side. To the wrong side and I'm going to uh, I'm going to top stitch it and I have the other one done as well again pressed in a corner one quarter and then pressed again so that it finishes the edge I'm going to top stitch it and I'll be right back to you I'm basting the uh, flat folded elastic to the quilt sandwich and I'm just gonna baste it or actually sew it a couple of times uh, back and forth uh, one eighth of an inch in from the edge. ready to sandwich all of our different layers together to finish off the book and so what I'm doing is laying the pockets right side down to the right side of the quilt sandwich for your notebook and then what you're going to do is take these handy dandy clips or pins if you have them and you're going to match the corners and the sides and clip the corners first just to make sure everything's matching and then the ends of the notebook with the pockets right side down against the fabric. So it's like this at this point, okay? And then you're going to take your 10 and 3 quarter by 12 inch piece of fabric, which is your inside fabric referred to. And um, I'm just realizing that I want my little skiers the same, going in the same direction. So I'm gonna make sure my skiers, this is directional fabric, is going in the same direction, right side down on top of these pockets. And I'm gonna match my 10 and 3 quarter sides and sort of center it over top of the pockets and over top of the quilt sandwich. And I'm gonna clip it in a few places. And then when I come back, I am going to show you that I have sewn it one quarter of an inch and I'm gonna trim it an eighth of an inch. So it's gonna be gonna allow for a very tiny seam, which will be easier when we go to turn it out. And I'll be showing you how to turn it out shortly. Hi again, I'm back and I'm we're trimmed down an eighth of an inch all around the edges. It's uh, was sewn a quarter of an inch just continuously. You don't leave an opening because you already have this opening with the lining. And I'm gonna turn it to the right side now. I have trimmed it, as I said, to one eighth of an inch. So we have a really nice tiny seam. I'm gonna pull it all out for you to see it, then I'll explain the next step. You wanna 
make sure that you smooth out the corners. Finger press it yourself. And then you're gonna take it to the iron and I'm gonna go ahead and press it. And then I'm gonna top stitch it really, really close to the edge, probably a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. And then I'll be back to show you the next step, but this is where we're at right now. It's all turned to the right side. And as you can see, we're seeing finished edges. So that's great. We're at the end of our project and as you can see, it's finished and it is top stitched all the way around. It's top stitched and you top stitch over top of the uh, flat uh, elastic as well. And this is what it looks like on the inside. And I'm gonna show you how with these pockets, we're able to insert the composition book. So I'm gonna make sure my skiers are the right way up and I'm just gonna insert the book. And you kind of got to bring the fabric to it rather than bringing the book to the fabric because the book is cardboard on the back and it's a little bit stiffer to insert, although it is totally doable and it works perfectly and it fits beautifully. And you just close it up and put your little closure on it, which is your elastic. And that's what the book looks like. Oop, put it so that you can see it. And there you go. That's completed. Makes a great gift. It's great for young, old, all genders. Um, as I indicated before, I had made this for one of my son-in-laws for um, to keep track of their woodworking um, designs on or their business uh, plans. And it'd be great for kids as well to keep track of their school activities, their projects, to sketch on, to color in, to write notes, whatever they would like to do. It's a great project to practice your free motion quilting skills. And, and that's in, in fact what I did with this pink one, this fuchsia pink one. And um, I wanted to mention as well that my pattern is available. I will put the, a link uh, below for the pattern and for my website, quiltinginthelog.com, um, as well as a list of materials that you need for this project. And I wanted to mention that um, the, all of the dimensions are in the pattern, but how to make this particular project. If you watch the video, you probably seen the dimensions as well, but there's a pattern for this um, tab closure, as well as the dimension and pattern of how to make this tie for the book for a tie closure. And then also I wanted to mention that um, there is a, a bookmark pattern included as well. It's a bonus pattern included with the pattern for the notebook cover. And this is um, kind of like what I plan on giving it as a gift, like with the bookmark. This is what it looks like. And then they obviously match the fabric because I think that looks really sharp. So they would be included as a gift. And I'm going to show you how the bookmark works. So I have my own page bookmarked right here like this. It just, you pop it onto the, the page and close your book. You can use it for any book. It wouldn't, you don't just have to use it for the notebooks, but I just thought I would include this really cool, really easy. And that could be a gift on its own. In fact, a few of these, Let's say you had a group of 20 ladies coming over for something <laughs> or 20 men, whatever. You can make them in, in fabric that men like as well. And if they're readers or they're book clubs, these are great little easy, easy, easy gifts to make for people. Um, make up in a few minutes, really. The book, the notebook covers themselves take maybe an hour, um, depending on how fast you are with your free motion quilting. So down below, I'll have the, the link to my website, the link to the pattern, and as well, um, a list of the supplies that you need. And on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, I'm hoping that you'll click on so happy to subscribe. And if you like my video, please go ahead and click on the like. And I'm hoping that 2022 brings you so much happiness and have a great day. Mm -hmm.